सो टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस क्वांटम नंबर अकॉर्डिंग टू स्कॉड इंजर वेव इक्वेशन फ्रॉम क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स which is supporting particle theory so schrodinger proposed an equation the equation is do square psi by do a square do square psi by do y square do square psi by do z square plus 8 by square m into e minus b into psi the whole divided by s square equal to 0 this is the schrodinger wave equation Since you are in higher secondary level, so just we remember the equation only. Derivation and other part not necessary. E total energy, V potential energy, psi amplitude of the wave function, psi square r beta probability of finding electron in space, x y and z or three coordinate axes, h Planck constant, m mass of the electron. These are the terms involved in this. equation okay let me come to you find what is psi square what is the orbital what is the orbital just imagine there is an atom central atom there is a nucleus and electrons are moving through through the central uh, surrounding the central nucleus so we have to define this is orbital and orbital is defined as a three dimensional region around central nucleus where the probability of finding electron is maximum this is called orbital can you follow let me repeat again an orbital is defined as a three dimensional region around central nucleus in an atom where the probability of finding an electron is maximum okay when it come for orbitals so we must know the shapes of orbital how many types of orbitals are there and what are the shape everything we must know to understand the clear idea so when this equation schrodinger equation was solved psi has three values or numbers the numbers are n l m namely principal quantum number azimuthal quantum number and magnetic quantum number. That is n principal quantum number, l azimuthal quantum number, m magnetic quantum number. The fourth quantum number is the fourth quantum number is not is obtained from spectroscopy, but not obtained is from Schrodinger wave equation. Very very important point you must have it in mind. The spin quantum number yes. It is not obtained from Schrodinger wave equation. It is obtained from the charge of the specifically ESR. So orbital we have already defined, so not necessary to repeat. Just see now the shape of S orbital. How can we think of now? When n equal to one, that is first level, the l equal to zero, subshell zero, and then orientation is zero. There is only one possible. That is, this is the s orbital. That means l equal to zero. Then we can say s is the s orbital. Here, the probability of finding an electron is the same in all direction at a given distance from the nucleus. It is therefore spherical in shape. Just see here, there is one orbit. It is now. This is the second one. This is the second. This is the third. Three. Let me say here three orbits there. So first orbit, second orbit, third orbit. So in between there is space. So electron is moving only in this orbit. So in between there is a space. The space is called a node. The node means where the probability of finding electron is zero. Very very interesting information. Okay. Now let me come for. Suppose in two s orbital, so suppose there is one, we can come here. That is, yes, 
one s and then two years a between this one s and two years there is a space that is called a no in two years orbital there is a spherical shell within this orbital where the probability of finding electron is zero this is called node or nodal surface so just see here this is one this is another so this is the node kindly follow so automatically you can raise the question how to find out the number of nodes very simple that is total number of nodes is in s orbital is nothing but n minus 1 nodes suppose n equal to 4 4 minus 1 3 nodes will be there like that so where n is the principal one node so let me come for shape of p orbital for p sub cell n equal to 2 l equal to 1 then m equal to 3 possibility that means L equal to 0, S orbital. L equal to 1, the shape will be dumb cell shape. It means the P orbital can have three possible orientations. Each P orbital consists of two lobes symmetrical about a particular axis. The three P orbitals are equal in energy, but different orientation. The shape is dumbbell. The shape is dumbbell. Okay. Depending upon the orientation of the lobes, these are denoted as 2px, 2py, 2pz. Accordingly, they are symmetrical about x, y and z axis respectively. The two lobes of each p orbital are separated by a nodal plane, a plane having zero electron density and thus p orbital have dumbbell shape and have directional in character. Now see the shape. Then this is actually P X. It is along the P X, X axis. So this is P Y. This is along the, the P orbital along the dumbbell along the P Y. This is P E Z. So kindly follow. So the same dumbbell in three orientations. X, Y and E Z. So there are three P orbital. P X, Y, P X, P Y, P E Z. The probability of finding electron is equal in both lobes. The p orbitals of higher energy levels have similar size shape, although the sizes are bigger. What is the interesting information is? Suppose if there is a 2p shape is like this, then 3p will be a little bigger shape. This is 2p, this will be 3p. And if it is still bigger, I will go for 4p. This is the 4P. This is the interesting information you must know. So, the P orbitals of high energy level have similar shape, but also the size are bigger. Can you follow? Okay, now let me come for shapes of D orbitals. For D sub shell, N equal to 3, so L equal to 2, that is the most important. L equal to 0, S orbital. L equal to 1, dumbbell. L equal to 2, double dumbbell. So there are 5 values for M, namely minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. It means D orbital can have 5 orientations. These are represented as DXY, DYZ, DZX, D S square minus Y square, and D S square. For example, if you go for third level, 3DXY, 3DYZ, 3DZX, 3d x square minus y square, 3d z square. So the 3, the d x y, d y is the d x, o is the x, and x square minus y square are double dumbbell shape, that is clover leaf shape, and d is a square as a dumbbell shape. So the, what you are seeing is the shapes of the orbital. So let me see here. That is, this is between the axis of X and Y. So two lobes. This is one dumbbell, this is another double dumbbell. D, X, Y. So what you are seeing here, it is D, Y, Z. Between Y and Z, between the axis. And D, Z, X, again between the axis. And coming over here, this is along the axis. D, X squared minus Y squared along the axis. D, X squared along the axis. So, there are four lobes in the ND orbital in the fact that D orbital have two nodes. 
This is the interesting information. So when you go for coordinated compounds, this will be d orbital shape will be important and the orientation is important because the orbitals along the axis only will be going for overlapping. Whereas orbital between the axis will not undergo for overlapping. So you must have a very clear idea about this. So now let me come for quantum numbers. I have already pointed out when we are solving this Codinger value equation and three values are in the value I can call it a three numbers. In the value I can call it a three numbers. And that three numbers are nothing but n number, n value, call it a principal quantum number, L value, call it a, I will call it as azimuthal quantum number, M value, I will call it as magnetic quantum number. So these three values are numbers obtained from Schrodinger wave equation. That is the information, only thing we need now. Okay, next question you can ask. What about spin quantum number? I, will, I can give information kindly have it in mind. Spin quantum number is obtained only from spectroscopy. That is the only thing I want to record. Principal quantum number usually refers to that by n. Kindly compare the n value proposed by Bohr. Bohr also given n. Level, energy level. N equal to 1, n equal to some more up than they are identical. Okay, now let me give some information. What is principal quantum? It gives information regarding the location and energy of electron. So we have discussed already, there is an atom, the nucleus at the center. The electron is moving around the central nucleus in, in three-dimensional space. And this space we are calling it as orbital. It may be S orbital, it may be P orbital, it may be D orbital, it may be F orbital. And so it gives, the principal quantum number gives information regarding the size of this orbital. This is the most important information. It gives information regarding size of the orbital. The number n representing the energy level is called the principal quantum number. Okay, what is the energy level? n equal to 1 represents the energy level it is the nearest to the nucleus. And n, to, n equal to 2, which is far away from the nucleus. So n equal to 1, that, 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 that orbital is very close to the nucleus. 2, far away. 3, far away is going on. So, the radius and the energy of different energy level in an atom is given by n value. I have already explained you. I have given already the equations. Okay, next one. The... Maximum number of electrons, this a question can be answered competitively. Maximum number of electrons, each shell energy level is given by 2n square. It's a formula is given, 2n square, where n equal to level 1, level 2, level 3. So let me give you now. Suppose, when n equal to 1, the shell, we will call it as k shell. Again, we have discussed already under the board, k shell. So 2n square means n equal to 1 means 1 square, 2 into 1 square, nothing but 2. So maximum number of electrons in the first level will be 2. That is the most important. When n equal to 2, we are calling it as L shell. So n2 substitute that, we will get 2 into 2 square, nothing but 8 electrons. So maximum number of electrons that can accommodate the second level is 8 electrons. The same way, n equal to, this is given wrongly, 3 n equal to 3 m shell so 2 n square 2 into 3 square that is 18 electrons same way here n equal to 4 n shell 2 n square 2 into 4 square nothing but 32 electrons in the fourth level 32 electrons will be there so this is the most important so the first level maximum electron 2 second level maximum electron 8 Third level, maximum electron 18. And the fourth level, maximum electron 32. Okay, let me go for the next. So next is second. Asymmetrical quantum number usually represented by L. So kindly, for um, uh, comparison, you just compare with our Sommerfeld theory. Okay. Asymmetrical quantum number gives information regarding shape of the orbital. Principal quantum number gives information size. Because if we know here, we can calculate size of the orbit and the energy also. But in this case, azimuthal quantum number gives information regarding shape of the orbital. It is also known as 
another name for it orbital quantum number or angular quantum number usually represented by l that means each value of l corresponds to nth of a subshell kindly follow so both is main shell now second automatically summer field subshell so here azimuthal quantum number l indicate subshell okay what is the relationship between the principal quantum number azimuthal quantum number for each value of n the possible values of l values are 0 to n minus 1 this is the most important information so if you want to calculate l values if you know n we can calculate l what is the formula that is n minus 1 values including 0 so the subshells are designated as s subshell p subshell d subshell and f subshell according to the values of 0 1 2 and 3 thus let me explain now when l equal to 0 we will call it as s subshell s stands for short when L equal to 1, it is called as P subshell. P stands for principal. L equal to 2, D subshell. D stands for diffuse. And L equal to 3, F subshell. F stands for fundamental. So, if you know L value, we can immediately calculate L value. And if you know L values, the corresponding subshell we can identify. Yes, I have already pointed out subshell, spherical, P, subshell, dumbbell, D, double dumbbell, F, complicated. Okay, next. So, we can call it number of subshells that L value in energy level is equal to the principal quantum number. This is another important that nothing but L, whatever L value, that is the number of subshell. That is n equal to 1, l equal to 0, the first level, only one level 0. That we will call it as 1 means 1s. So l equal to 0, yes. n equal to 2, there are two subshells, 0 and 1, that is 2 subshells, 2s and 2p, second level. When n equal to 3, number, so there are total number of 3 subshells, that is 3, 3s, 3p, and 3d. The same way n equal to 4, 4 subshell, l equal to 0, 1, 2, and 3, 4 subshells. So 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4. This is the most important because we know that l equal to n minus 1 values including 0. This is the most important information. Now, Azimuthal quantum number L again some more information. So we can also calculate the total number of electron each subshell is given below. So total number of electron each shell 2n square. The same way total number of electron each subshell again I am giving an equation that is nothing but 2 into 2L plus 1. 2 into 2L plus 1. L is the, the corresponding azimuthal quantum number. So here I have given the list. So this is L value, this is subshell, this is the maximum number of electrons. So if it is 0, apply this 2 into 2L plus 1 formula. If L equal to 0, automatically you will get 2 maximum number of electrons. S orbital, 2 electrons. But L equal to 0, that we are calling it a P subshell. In P, the maximum number of electrons will be 6 electrons. So we know already Px, Py, P is the so maximum 6. When L equal to 2, thus it is called as D subshell. The maximum number of electrons will be 10. In the case of L equal to 3, this, it is called as F subshell. The maximum number of electrons will be 14. So kindly have it in mind. So total number of electrons in subshell can be calculated using this equation 2 into 2L plus 1. Okay, next. Third one, magnetic quantum number M, if you represent by M. So the magnetic quantum number gives information regarding orientation of orbitals. Orientation of orbital. So here I want to give. So just to take um, what is the orientation of orbital? We have uh, I have shown you already p orbital, p x, p y, and p is that in that is in x axis p orbital is oriented. I'll call it p x. In y uh, y axis p orbital is oriented p y. The same way p is that. So. Magnetic quantum number gives information regarding the orientation of orbital usually represented by M. What is M? 
So m can be given as 2l plus 1. So if you know l value, we can be able to calculate m. So where is including again minus l2 plus 1, that is minus that is L2 plus 1 including 0, that will give the M value. So each M value corresponds to a specific orientation of orbital in space. This is the most important information regarding the magnetic quantum number. So let me give some more information. So this is the list I have given. So under the magnetic quantum number M value, we know the formula M equal to that is 2L plus 1, that is the value. Okay. So when L equal to N equal to 1, the corresponding L value is 0. What about M value? It is 2 L, it is again only one value, it is 0. L equal to 0, 2 into 0, 0, so plus 1, that nothing but 0, 1 value. The same way, when N equal to 2, M is 1, so again L value is 0. If it is 0, means again 2 value will get now. That is, two, 0 means again M value is 0. For another is 1, N minus 1 again. L equal to 1 means we'll get now 3 values. 3 means minus 1, 0, plus 1. That is minus L2 plus L, including 0. So minus 1, 0, plus 1. In the same way, if we take N, M equal to 3, there are 3 uh, sub levels 0, 1, and 2. There are 3 sub levels. For sub level 0, only one magnetic quantum number 0. For sub cell 1, Again, there are three sublevels based on the orientation. I can say three possibility, three orientation. So minus one, zero, plus one. That is Px, Py, P is that that is. When you come for third, that is again two. L, L value equal to three. When L equal to, sorry, L, L value equal to two. When L equal to two means again the possibility is from minus two to minus plus two. So there are five orientations. We have discussed already the case of d orbitals, d x y, d y z, d z x, d s square minus y square, and d z square. So this is the way we can. Let me go for next. The spin quantum number. This is the most important information I want to give. Spin quantum number, the fourth quantum number is obtained only from spectroscopy. That will be enough for you. So let me give you now. Spin quantum number gives information regarding the orientation of electron, usually represented by S. This is the most important. So I have already pointed out it is obtained from spectroscopy. Let me go for the next. So the spin quantum number can be referenced by two values. One is S equal to plus of, another is S equal to minus of. That means, plus of means it is the clockwise orientation, it's moving clockwise, we will represent by plus of. And moving anti-clockwise, we usually represent by minus of. So only two orientations. For the electron, that for electron it comes two orientations. So clockwise orientation, we'll call it as plus of. Anti-clockwise orientation, we'll call it minus of. That conventionally, we can also represent by the symbol, uh, yeah, that is arrow we can represent. So these two values correspond to clockwise and anti-clockwise spins. I have already shown the picture. The clockwise spin is usually represented by an arrow pointing upward. This is the most important. Conventionally, when you are representing atomic structure, we are representing orbital. Suppose this is S orbital, a box, we will write normally like this to represent electron. So electron pointing upward means that is moving clockwise. The electron pointing downward means moving anti-clockwise. This is the convention. So this convention only here. So clockwise spin is usually represented by an arrow pointing upward. The same way, the anti-clockwise spin is usually represented by the arrow pointing downward. So when I am discussing the electronic configuration in the next class, I will explain still in clear way so we can understand very well. So the only remaining part I have to discuss under the atomic structure is I have to discuss electronic configuration. I hope I will discuss in the next class. Thank you. Good evening. We are viewers of Akshay.com by Vetri from Pondicherry. Today, I am going to discuss electronic configuration. What is electronic configuration? That is, 
the distribution of electrons into various orbitals present in an atom is called electronic configuration. So let me discuss. Electronic configuration can be done by two ways. One is by using the symbol S, P, D for the orbitals and we can write the electronic configuration. This is the one method. This, this notation we can use. S, P, D notation we can use. And corresponding to the level we can indicate 2, 3, 4, etc. So, so let us say if it is 2 mean, so let, me, so let me say if it is 4, 4S, 4 4P, 4 4D. 4 I can represent and I can indicate the, elect, I can fill the electron. This is one way by notation. This is one, one, this is the one method of filling of electrons. The second method is, I can represent the diagram. So for example, S means I will represent the form of orbital. One orbital for S. P means I can represent three P orbitals. And D means I can represent five D orbitals. So, then I can show the, I can fill up the electrons. So, the distribution of electron into various orbitals in an atom is called electronic configuration. And this electronic configuration can be represented by two ways. By using symbol S, P, D, I can represent. Or, I can simply draw the diagram, that is orbital, that is the symbol, uh, diagram, I can use. Okay, let me explain that. Now, there are rules, general rules, how to fill up electrons in various energy levels, various orbitals. Now, here I want to give one information. According to modern, modern atomic structure, modern theory, in an atom, there is a central nucleus. Electrons are moving around the central nucleus in various orbitals. So, when we are having electrons, then we have to fill up this following the rules that we are going to see. The next question arises. That is, when we are how do you know the total number of electrons? The modern atomic theory gives information. That is, if you know the atomic number, atomic number if you know, that is nothing but total number of protons, that is equal to total number of electrons. Total number of electrons. So, for any element, if you know the atomic number, atomic number, immediately we know that is total number of protons is equal to total number of electrons. So, immediately we know the total number of electrons. So, from that total number of electrons, we can fill up, we can write the electronic configuration for any elements. So, what are the rules we are going to follow? Now, let me give general rules. The so, rule one, first rule, the electrons should be filled one by one in various orbitals. So, just now I have pointed out, so, atom consists of central nucleus and, uh, and uh, electrons are revolving the, around the central nucleus in various uh, orbitals. So, depending upon the number, it is filled, they have to fill, right. So, when we are filling now, should be filled one by one in various orbitals. S orbital, P orbital, D orbital, F orbital, we have seen already. So this is the rule 1. Okay, this is we are seeing already, 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P. Let me give one more information to this. Under the one, only one orbital, S orbital, only one orbital in the first level, n equal to 1. The second level, S orbital 1, the second level, that is n equal to 1, that is here 2, here n equal to 1. The second level, 2s, 1 orbital, again 2p, there are 3p orbital, px, py, p, z, so totally 4 orbitals here, the second level. The same way, if you go for n equal to 3, so here 1 orbital, here 3 orbital, here 5 orbital, so totally we have 9 orbitals. It's going on. So the idea here it is, 
So we have to fill up electron in various orbitals. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, etc. Okay, let me go for the next. Rule 2. This is the most important. The rule, the rule 2 is called the half base rule. So let me read the definition. The orbitals with lower energy should be filled first and then with high energy. The orbitals with lower energy should be filled first and then with higher energy. Now, kindly recollect what we have studied in Bohr atomic theory. First level, energy level we have calculated. So 1s, lower. Then second level, 2s, 2p, second level. 3s, 3p, 3d, third level. So from this energy level diagram, the lower most is 1s. So, the rule says, the orbital with low energy should be filled first. That means, we have to fill first only 1s. The important information, only 1s. Then after filling up, then we have to go for second level, 2s and 2p, we have to fill up. Then only we have to go for 3s, 3p and 3d. That is this one. Second rule says, the orbitals with lower energy should be filled first and then with higher energy. That is how this rule. Okay, let me go for the next one. Rule 3. This is the most important. Called Hence Rule. Obeying Hence Rule. Let me read that. Pairing of electrons should be done only when there is no empty orbitals. Pairing of electrons should be done only when there is no empty orbital in a subshell. This is the most important. So, you kindly recollect that what we have discussed in previous class. First level, only one subshell. Only one orbital. Second shell, that is 2s, 2p. One number n equal to 2, l shell. There are two subshells, s, p, two subshells. And yes, only one orbital, p, three, three orbital, 3p, px, py, p is that. Like this we are. So, when you consider for this, Pairing of electrons should be done only when there is no empty orbital in subshell. So this is giving a very clear idea regarding for subshell. S subshell, P subshell, D subshell. So this hands rule is giving information regarding filling up of orbital in a subshell. So here specifically I have taken carbon atom. The carbon atom atomic number is actually it is 6. So total electron is 6. So we are having 6 electrons. So how to fill up these 6 electrons? So first is, the low, that is, well actually, sorry, here it is, already we are having 1s, that is 1s2, that is 2 electrons already is there. Then 2s2, that is another second level, 2s2, electron, 2 electron, and 2p, that is 2 electron. So when we are considering this, so regarding this, 2 is, uh, the s2 completed, Coming for the p orbital, there are two probability. One probability is, but the p, that is first p orbital one, and second p orbital another electron. This is one possibility. Another possibility, both the two electrons in this 2p, which is another possibility. So among this, which is correct one. So here I have already given a tick mark, because the Hans rule guide us. So, Pairing of electrons should be done only when there is no empty. So here actually there are two empty orbitals. When there is empty, we should not pair. We should not pair. So, so when we have to pair the, um, that is the electrons, only all the three P orbitals are completely filled, then only we have to pair it. Suppose we have four electrons, that is here, that is, instead of P orbital two, if we have four, after filling up third, then for four only, then we have to pair. So, the Hans rule says, pairing of electrons should be done only when there is no empty orbital in a subshell. So, since there is an empty orbital, we should not pair. This is Hans rule. Interesting information. Next one. Rule four. An orbital cannot be filled with more than two electrons. So the maximum electron, this is called the Pauli exclusion principle. 
any orbital will be having a maximum number of two electrons. This is the most. Any orbital, whether it is a 1s or 2s or 2p, wherever it is. So specifically, if it is an orbital, maximum is two electrons. An orbital cannot be filled with more than two electrons, which is called the Pauli exclusion principle. The same principle in another form, I can give this way. It is impossible for any two electrons in the same atom to have all the four point numbers identical. So if you consider two electrons in the same atom, and if you are just finding out the all the four quantum numbers, that is principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number, and spin quantum number. So all the four quantum numbers will not be identical. This is the most important Pauli exclusion principle. So let me explain with a suitable example that you can understand. So what I have given the electronic configuration now, helium atom. Helium atomic number is 2, so there are 2 electrons. So that is 1s, so both electrons are there here in this. And kindly recollect that we have already discussed under the quantum numbers. So in that case, yes. So 1 indicate 1s2, that is n equal to 1. So there are 2 electrons. This is one electron pointing upward, another electron is pointing downward. We have seen already, pointing upward means it is moving clockwise direction. Pointing downwards means it is moving anti-clockwise direction. That is spin. That is the idea. We have already discussed on the quantum numbers. So there are two electrons. So in the two electrons, the number n value in both cases 1. Both electrons. One is pointing upward, clock moving to spinning clockwise. This is spinning anti-clockwise. Both n value, principal quantum number, both cases 1. The second is if n equal to 1, what is L? L equal to n minus 1. That is 0. So, L equal to 0 for this electron. L equal to 0 for this electron also. So, the electron spinning at clockwise and the electron spinning anti-clockwise both have same value of L value. Azimuth quantum number value 0, 0 both cases. And third quantum number, magnetic quantum number. Magnetic quantum number again we know what is m? It is number nothing but 2l plus 1 value including 0. That means l0 means that only one value nothing but 0 again. So both cases, both electrons having the magnetic quantum number 0. So, so all the three quantum numbers, principal quantum number, asymmetrical quantum number, magnetic quantum number is same in both cases for that is the electron spinning clockwise and the electron spinning anti-clockwise, all the three quantum numbers are same. Now, if you count for the spin quantum number, it varies, it is not identical. Because in the case of the electron spinning clockwise, the spin is plus half. The electron spinning anti-clockwise, the value spin quantum number is minus half. It is different. The idea here it is. It is not, just go for the previous statement, it is not, for, it is impossible for any two electrons in the same atom to have all the four quantum numbers identical. It is impossible, it is not possible. So that is we have proved again. That we have proved because in this case, the fourth quantum number, the spin quantum number is not identical, it is different. So that is obeying the, the principle. So one more information, that is, here the first case, that is an atom cannot be filled with more than two electrons. Let us assume, if you fill more than one, what will happen? So you can go for that, suppose, you take again one S, so let us assume this way, one electron, another electron, and another electron is like this. So I suppose, hypothetically, I am filling three electrons in one S. If I fill three electrons, mean this or this electron and this electron identical. Identical means automatically, we think, just think of, will be zero. That means, n equal to one, both cases one. L equal to zero, L equal to zero. M equal to zero, M equal to zero. So, yes equal to plus half and both will be plus half. That's why the rule says very clearly, is given, an orbital cannot be filled with more than two electrons. That's why in other ways, but it is impossible for any two electrons in the same atom to have all the four quantum numbers. I think they call
Okay, let me go for the next one. Now, electrons prefer to enter subshells which get either completely filled or half filled orbitals. That is, electrons prefer to enter subshells which get either completely filled or half filled. This is the most important rule. That means, that, that is, when you are entering into subshells, subshell means when you think of S subshell, P subshell, D subshell, F subshell. But S means subshell only one orbital, S orbital. But when you go for P subshell, there are three P orbital, PX, PY, PZ, three P. When you go for D orbital, a D subshell, there are five D orbital, D, X, Y, D, Y, Z, D, Z, X, D S square minus Y square and D S square, 5 D orbitals. So, when you go for again F orbital, there are 7 F orbitals. So, the subshell P or D or F, so we are considering as a subshell, but in this case, so we have to consider only P, D and F subshell, we have to consider. So, in that case, so, when we are filling up the priority, electron prefer to enter that is either completely filled or half filled. Suppose if you take p orbital, that is half filled will be 3 electrons, complete will be 6 electrons. If you take d, that is a d subshell correspondingly, the half filled will be 5, complete if will be will be 10. If you take EF subshell, again the half filled will be 7 and complete will be 14. So, incompletely filled means it may be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, etc. So, in the case of P, 3 half filled, 6 completely filled. In the D subshell, half filled is 5 and completely filled is 10. In the case of S, F subshell, 7 is the half filled and 14 is the completely filled. So, when we are filling up electrons, we have to take care of this one. That is, the rule says clearly, electrons prefer to enter subshells, specifically P, D and F, and even S means only one half fill completely is two, which get either completely filled or half filled. This is the most important. Okay, here another information given. That is, half filled orbitals are more stable than partially filled orbital. Half filled orbitals are more stable than partially filled orbital. In the case of S subshell, S is having only one means of completely, two means of completely filled. There will be no partial, we cannot hear it is. But when you go for P, I have already pointed out, three half filled, six is completely filled. So one, two, four, five are, we can call it as partial. When you go for a D subshell, then 5 is the half fill and uh, the completely filled is 10 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and go for again 6, 7, 8 and 9 we will call it as partial. So in that case half filled orbitals are more stable than partially filled orbital. Another comparison. Similarly, completely filled orbitals are more stable that is than partially filled orbital and even half filled orbitals. When you compare completely filled and half filled, so filled, completely filled will be more stable than half filled. When you, com when you compare half filled and partial, so half filled will be more stable than partial. So these information, this rule we have to follow when we are filling up of electrons. Okay, this is the most important. Now let me explain with two examples to fulfill the rule. Now, first one is I am taking chromium. Chromium atomic number, you can say that is, that is uh, 6, 12, and you take any vanadium chromium, that is 24. Atomic number, and you take any vanadium chromium, yes, 24 is the atomic number of chromium. So, if you fill, if you write the electronic configuration in, the, in, the, in, the, in this symbol, you over 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5, 4s1. I am going to explain how to fill up this. How I am getting this, I am going to explain. But temporarily you are still now. So the 24 I am filling up like this. So when I am filling up these electrons in various orbital, I am starting from the lower most as per the rule. 
First, I am filling up 1s2. After filling up, then I will go for 2. Second, 2s. And 2p, there are 2p orbitals, p orbital, 3p orbitals in the second level. So, level 2 indicates n, brittle water number, p orbital. So, there are 3p, 3 into 2, 6. So, 2, 6. Then, coming for third level, there are s, s subshell, p subshell, d subshell. S only one orbital, so maximum electron is 2. And P subshell, there are 3 P orbital, 3 into 2, 6 electrons. And D, there are 5 D orbital, 5 into 2 again, maximum 10. But here, atomic number, if you take 24, if you fill up again. So, now, 6, that is 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 6, 10, 12, 12 plus 6, 18, then plus 5, 23, then 4 S1. So, this is one way of filling up electronic configuration. The other part, second, at the right side, you can see again, 1s2, as in the previous case, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 3d4, and another possibility, 4s2. So, so two ways we can write the electronic configuration of chromium. One is, the only difference here it is just compare 3d5, 4s1, one possibility, 3d4 and 4s2, another possibility. The rule says very clearly, that means... The electron preferably entered into subshell when it is half filled and more they completely filled. So 3D, D half filled is 5, but this is 4. So this is the more stable, this is not the correct one. So when we are filling up the electron, so after filling up 3D5, then only one electron will go to the 4 s one. So this 3D4 4 s 2 is not a suitable electronic configuration. So this is an example given how filled it is most stable than partially filled. Let me give one more example by taking copper where completely filled I can explain. As usual copper, electronic configuration, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, magnesium, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. So copper is 29 atomic number. Atomic number is 29. So these 29 means in atomic number there are 29 electrons and 29 electrons when we are filling up we have to come fill up from the lower most the orbitals, lower the levels. So 1s2, that I can filling up 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10. The same the right side again. So I mean remaining one actually count, just we count the dot number 29. So 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 6, that is here and this 2, here and this again 8. So total if you come here, that is so 8 plus 10, 18. So 18 plus 8, 26 plus 12, that is 28. The remaining one is 29, the total number. The same if you come here, here total 2, here it is 8, here it is 17, here it is 2. So there are two probability. Left side, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10 and 4s1, one possibility. In another possibility, the right hand side, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d9 and 4s2. So which is more preferable? The rule says very clearly, d orbital, maximum electron is 10. So by after filling up 3d10, then only the fourth level will go one electron will occupy. So this is not correct. This is the correct one. So very clearly, the rule, rule gives very clearly. So when we are filling up electron in various sub-levels, Subshell, we should be careful. So give priority when we are filling up. So give priority for how filled and completely filled orbital. Then we will get the correct uh, the electronic configurations. Okay, let me go for the next one. So the most important among them all, using now only I am giving answer because initially I told you I will explain later. Now I am explaining using energy level diagram. The sequence in which the orbitals are filled can be represented graphically as follows. So how to fill up electron? What is the any systematic method? So I am going to explain this. Just see. So this is the energy level diagram for to fill up electron. To distribute electron in various orbitals around central nucleus. So this is the left side. This is energy. This is energy. And this here, the corresponding. Yes. So here... Lower most 1s, second 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f, and 6s. 
So using this, so first what you have to write, you have to write lower most 1s, then 2s 2p, then 3s 3p 3d, then go for 4th level 4s 4p 4d 4f, and you can go 5th level 5s 5p 5d 5f, and 6. Why I am stopping? So you can even write 6p 6d 6f. Again, our elements are not sufficient to fill up, so we are stopping with that. This will be enough. So in our level. So, suppose you have any electric, if you want to write electronic configuration for any unknown element, any atoms, so now you can use apply this. Let me show you one by one. A few examples I will show. Suppose I have hydrogen. I want to fill up electronic. What is the electronic configuration of hydrogen? If any question is asked. So first I have to uh, um, remember, what is the atomic number? Atomic number is that equal to, that is 1. 1 means there is only one electron. So electronic configuration of hydrogen is 1s1. Electronic configuration of hydrogen is 1s1. Okay, suppose, go for helium. Helium atomic number is 2. So atomic number 2 means the total number of electrons is 2. Automatically, I will fill it up as 1s2 because the maximum electron that can be accommodated in an orbital is 2 so 1s2 that is helium so let me go for the next element that is lithium lithium atomic number is 3 so if i have three electronic three electrons how do i have fill up so first level 1s2 i will fill up two electron the remaining third electron automatically will go for that is in this case in this case, one electron. So, our three electrons, I can fill up like this. Two in the 1s and one in 2s. So, this is the electronic configuration. So, when I want to write electronic configuration, lithium means 1s2 and 2s1. I will write the electronic configuration for lithium. Same way. If you want to write the electronic configuration of both, that is beryllium, beryllium atomic number 4. So, four electrons. So, atomic number is 4. There are four electrons. So automatically I will write 1 S2, the remaining 2, 2 S2, second. So automatically, for, well, I will write the electronic configuration is 1 S2 and 2 S2. This is the electronic configuration for beryllium. So any elements, if I draw this energy level diagram, I can fill up systematically, then I, I can write immediately the distribution of electrons in various orbitals. So any question is asked, so I can simply draw this energy level diagram and just the starting filling up from the, uh, from the bottom, I can give the correct representation of electronic configuration. Only thing is I should be very careful, when I am writing for that is PED etc, when you are coming for that is especially 3D and 4S, you should be very careful regarding this because the half filled and completely filled orbital will be more stable than partial, so you should be very careful, like I have already explained. So, this is the way you have to fill out electronic on the electrons in various orbitals. So, next chapter, when I am discussing the periodic table, I can give you the short road, what way, that is, after knowing the atomic number, after knowing the electronic, that is, the total number of electrons, we are filling up. But in the examination, competitive examination, question will be asked. So we have to write, within one minute, we have to find out the answer. So many predictions. So uh, then if you are drawing this energy diagram, if you are filling up, electron is very, very, it's a waste of time. There is a short road. When I am discussing the periodic table, I will do the short road. How to write immediately electronic configuration. So let me, let me conclude now. So when we are, that is, when we are, filling of electrons with various orbital in the atoms, we have to follow the general rules already given and we have to fill up. I hope you have enjoyed the electronic configuration.